Yo, what's going on, NFL fans? Hope you're having a happy football. Welcome into NFL Daily. My name is Trace Gerard, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down a mock draft from Lance Zerline, as well as some very interesting trade rumors. And to round things out, we're also going to be taking your questions in our live Q&A mailbag, so use hashtag NFL or send in a super chat to get on the show. But while we let the people pile in and while we let our audience build up, I want you guys to pick a wide receiver for me. Brandon Ayuk or T. Higgins? Just give me a one for Ayuk, give me a two for T, and let me know what you guys are thinking. We got Ty Man the Buckeye, who was the first one in the show. Shout out to you, man. We got Nick Powell, Tony Fuentes, uh, Cameron, Red Zone Prods, Joshua, Shamari. Everyone's hanging out with us. So let's talk about the votes. Uh, Tony Fuentes going with T. Higgins. Nick Powell, Ty Man, and Cameron going with Brandon Ayuk. Kevin with T. Higgins. Red Zone, Shamari, Joshua, Shelley all going Brandon Ayuk, Tony Fuentes, Boyd Stevens, Flame for Jesus, all going with T. And then on top of that, Jim Clegg, Richard Lee, K3858, and Jeffrey Johnson. Uh, well, Jeffrey Johnson says flip a coin. They're the same person. But Jim, Richard, and K are all saying Brandon Ayuk. Shelly as well is saying Brandon Ayuk. I keep letting me know what you guys think in the comment section. And also, really quick, help me out and hit the thumbs up icon. And while you did that, I want to tell you guys about our awesome presenting sponsor, and it is Game Time. It is my favorite ticketing app because they have the best seats, lowest price guaranteed. And on top of that, the prices drop as the events get closer, and they got these flash deals and these zone deals that are absolutely electric, and it's the lowest price guaranteed. And one of my favorite things about this app is how user-friendly it is. Not only can you see where your seats are going to be at the stadium or at the venue or at the concert, you can also find out if there's a promo going on. So in some of these games, you'll see like a little red flag or like an asterisk or some little symbol next to them, and that means that they're doing a stadium giveaway, like a bobblehead or a t-shirt or whatever it is. So you can get started if you use our code CHATSPORTS to get $20 off. Download the Game Time app. Use promo code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off your first purchase. The Game Time app is awesome. I've been able to utilize this to make so many memories with my friends, with my girlfriend, and with my family. And I encourage you to, to encourage you to do the same. So download the Game Time app. Terms do apply. Use promo code C H A T S P O R T S for twenty dollars off. All that information is in the comment section, description, and live chat of this video. Now we do have some NFL news that shakes up some things in free agency. Jordan Schultz did report. That Leo Collins is headed up to Buffalo to play with the Bills. Collins has started 86 games in seven seasons with both Cincinnati and Dallas. And in terms of the contract details, it's a one-year deal worth up to $6.25 million. That up to is very important in a key detail there because it's not he's getting paid six and a quarter. He can make up to six and a quarter. So depending on incentives, depending on playtime and all that kind of stuff, He'll be making a little over $6 million, but Collins had at least one major, or one more suitor, but chose Puffalo with the hopes of winning a Super Bowl. Who's going to tell him? Who's, who's going to tell him that Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis are gone? Who, who's going to tell Leo Collins? Not me. Anyway, there's just some news and some updates around the league for you, and that's why you should tune into our NFL Daily Shows. But let's get you guys back involved in the comment section. Pick your favorite part of the offseason. You can see it. You can go draft, you can go free agency, you can go trade. Let me know what is your favorite part of the offseason. For me, I love the draft, but I get crazy for some trades. Like I think it's so fun seeing draft picks get moved, players get moved. I think it's a really intriguing uh, part of the offseason that really shakes things up and can like define what teams are going to be doing in the regular season. Um, Evan saying, you're on my favorite YouTuber. I appreciate that, Evan. Thank you so much. Red Zone is saying the draft, Kyle the draft, Nick free agency, Lone Star Killer, trades, Kevin draft, Mark draft, Tony Fuentes trades, Jeffrey Johnson trades, Alex draft, Red Zone draft, Jeremy Hernandez likes draft and trades, Jim likes the draft, Tony likes trades, Jason Torres also likes the NFL draft as well. Douglas is typing his D for draft too. But we got a lot to get, get into for today's video. 
But we can't get it started until we get some more likes. We got 94 people hanging out with us, only 21 likes. When we get to 30 likes, the bosses are saying that we can get this thing rocking and rolling. So help a brother out. Hit that thumbs up icon. Like today's video so we can dive into some trade rumors. We can dive into a mock draft reaction. We can get to your questions. So be sure to hit that thumbs up icon. I need six more. I need six more likes before we can get this party started. And while you're doing that, be sure to use hashtag NFL so that way you can get on the show or send in a super chat. If you do send in a super chat, you skip the line. You spend a lot of extra time on your questions. So it's kind of like the fast pass at Disney World. So get your questions in. Hashtag NFL. Send in a super chat. And we're past 30 likes. That means we can get this thing started. But last question. Who do you think is going to win March Madness? This is NFL Daily. This is not NBA now. This is not any sort of basketball content. This is NFL Daily. But I want to talk to you all about some basketball because March Madness, it's you know the biggest sporting event going on right now. You think Alabama, UConn, NC State, or Purdue will win the men's tournament? I went with UConn. I think it's the year of the repeat. Chiefs repeated. UConn repeats. Denver maybe repeats in the NBA. Who knows? I, I think that this is the year of the repeat. I'm seeing UConn from Mark. I'm seeing Purdue from Evan. I also see a $2 super chat from Shamari. Shout out to you, Shamari. We'll pop that up here in just one second. Purdue from Tony. Evan, Purdue. UConn from Cool Guy. Tony says Purdue. Douglas says Alabama. He's going roll tide. Roll. Evan, Purdue. Red Zone, UConn. Love to see it. And Shamari sent in a $2 super chat. Getting the super chat cherry popped for the day. The Bills will be worse this year in my opinion. I totally agree. I think that the Bills are not going to be nearly as good as they have been in the past few years. I think that they're still not going to be a terrible football team, but I don't think that they're going to be a, competing for a Super Bowl. Like, to me, you could take the Bills out of the top three in the AFC, and I would put it as, in no particular order, Chiefs, Ravens, Bengals are my top three teams. That's just me. I don't think that the Bills are a top three team in the AFC anymore. That's, that's just my personal opinion. We will dive into this question in our mailbag to Shamari, so appreciate you for sending that $2 super chat. But guys, we're going to discuss uh, some trade rumors and some trade buzz, so let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Like the video, use hashtag NFL if you got a question, and I'm going to lather the pipes. We can get this thing going. All right, without further ado, we got some NFL trade rumors that I want to discuss. Before we hop into today's NFL trade rumors, I want you to let me know what your favorite part of the offseason is. Is it the draft? Is it free agency? Or is it the trades? For me, I am a sucker for the draft, but I absolutely love when trades go down. It shakes things up, and it really helps let fans know like what could go down in the season. Gets people excited, gets people riled up, and it's so much fun. So get in the comments section, type D for draft, F A for free agency, or T for trade. And as for what we're diving into today's show, Stefan Diggs just got dealt to the Houston Texans. So I wanted to just talk about a few players that could be traded next after this blockbuster trade went down. But let's take a look at the trade details for those of you who may have missed it. Stefan Diggs is headed to Buffalo or headed from Buffalo to Houston for a 2025 second round pick that they actually got from the Vikings when they originally traded uh, Stephon Diggs. Now the Texans are getting the wide receiver. They're also getting a 2024 sixth round pick and on top of that a 2025 fifth round pick. And in terms of like why this was able to go down, interesting note here, Stephon Diggs will be a free agent after this season. Like in the 2025 offseason, Stephon Diggs will be a free agent. He took um, a one, they agreed to a one-year deal so that way, Stephon Diggs can get more guaranteed money this year, but also have a chance to make more money next year. Also helps the Texans have a little bit more cap flexibility. And to be honest, I did not see this Diggs trade going down. I really didn't. I thought that the Texans had had a really good offseason so far. Kind of figured that they were just going to be chilling until the draft and make something happen, maybe trade up, maybe make a move then. But I did not expect this Stephon Diggs trade to go down. And if you agree with me, give me a me in the comments section. But let's talk about some trade rumors that could happen here very, very soon. 
Brandon Ayuk is a hot commodity and a hot topic in the NFL rumor mill. And in terms of some destinations that I could see Brandon Ayuk ending up with, the Buffalo Bills. For obvious reasons, Buffalo just traded away their number one wide receiver. They need players. They don't have Gabe Davis anymore. They don't have Stephon Diggs. Dawson Knox is a good tight end. However, I think that they need a wide receiver. Kansas City, Rasheed Rice, need I say more? Also, you just need pass catchers in Kansas City. They won a Super Bowl without them, but I don't think you want to play with fire too many times. The Pittsburgh Steelers, they've just been so active, and I could see them being interested in adding another dynamic pass catcher for Justin Fields slash Russell Wilson and the New England Patriots. I mean, who the hell is their wide receiver one? Go get them a wide receiver. Go get them some help because they also have some decent trade. Uh, they have a de decent trade package and something to eat decent to offer with a very prime draft pick. But I do think that Brandon Ayuk is going to stick around in San Francisco. And if I was the 49ers general manager, John Lynch, I'd do everything in my power to keep him around. Don't shoot the messenger. I think Brandon Ayuk is a much better receiver than Debo Samuel. What I did not say is I think Brandon Ayuk is a better offensive weapon than Debo Samuel. I just think he's a better wide receiver. So if I'm the 49ers, I'm doing everything I can to keep Brandon Ayuk and Brock Purdy and that connection together for as long as possible. Now let's talk about another wide receiver, T. Higgins. He's been stirring up some trade rumors for quite some time now. He did request a trade uh, from Cincinnati. And in terms of some places I could see him ending up, Buffalo. For the same exact reason as Brandon Ayuk. They need wide receivers. The Giants, they're also in the market for a wide receiver, and they could offer some pretty nice draft cap or trade compensation. The Patriots, we mentioned them already. Same reasons. And then the Carolina Panthers. I just think Bryce Young needs us all the help that they can get. He needs wide receivers. He needs offensive line. So at the end of the day, they just need everything. But I think that T. Higgins to Carolina could be a really, really good move for the Panthers, and I think that that can make them competitors in a weak NFC South. But taking a look at the two wide receivers side by side, I mean, the numbers heavily favor Brandon Ayuk. But I want to point one thing out here. It's not like T. Higgins is your bona fide wide receiver one. Now, granted, Brandon Ayuk has to split a lot of time with George Kittle, Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, a bunch of other offensive weapons out in San Francisco. But I do think that Brandon Ayuk is the better wide receiver, and I think that T. Higgins can still provide a really solid offensive performance for a team that needs pass catchers. But I want you to pick a wide receiver for me. If you were the GM of your favorite team, which one of these guys are you going for? Just type one for Brandon Ayuk, give me a two for T. Higgins, and let me know down in the comments section, and I'll be interacting with you down in the comments as well. So coming up, we're going to be discussing a quarterback that could get traded. Always shakes things up a little bit. But before we do, got to give a special shout out to Game Time for sponsoring today's video and making NFL Daily possible today. Now, Game Time, if you're unaware of who they are, it's a ticketing app. And it is the best ticketing app in the whole wide world. Now, they offer the best seats for the lowest price, guaranteed. Who, li who likes a guarantee? Because I do. Not a lot of things in life, not a lot of things in life are guaranteed, but Price Picks is making you one. The prices can drop as the events get closer. They have flash deals, they have zone deals, they have all these cool things. But it's such a user friendly app as well. You can just download the app, use our promo code Chatsports to get twenty dollars off. Meaning when you go and buy tickets to your next concert, comedy show, sporting event, whatever, basically you got a twenty dollar voucher on us. Meaning you can go take that 20 bucks, buy a t-shirt, buy a hat, go buy yourself a beer, get a little bit of nicer tickets maybe. That's another option too. But I don't care what you do as long as you do it on the Game Time app and you use our promo code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S. That's promo code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Terms do apply. Use our promo code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Shout out to Game Time for sponsoring today's video. It's last minute tickets, lowest price. Guaranteed. All right, so Zach Wilson is the quarterback that I wanted to discuss in today's video. And I think that he is a player that, let's call a spade a spade. He didn't get dealt a good hand. It's not like he's been really, really good for New York, but it's also not like he got dealt uh, a, a, an extraordinary situation. Now, in terms of some destinations for Zach Wilson, 
CBS actually listed the New Orleans Saints as a destination. I do think that the Saints could be in the market for a quarterback too, but they did trade up last year to select Jake Hayner, who was the Senior Bowl MVP out of Fresno State. The Denver Broncos, you really want to roll with Jarrett Studham? Okay, can, can, whatever helps you sleep at night. The Minnesota Vikings, if for whatever reason they can't get to J.J. McCarthy or Drake May or they can't take one of their top draft targets at a quarterback position, maybe Zach Wilson is a guy that Kevin O'Connell would bank on because I think that whoever does go to Minnesota is going to be put in a good situation where Kevin O'Connell is an offensive-minded coach that's really, really smart, and then you have a plethora of weapons in Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, and Aaron Jones at a running back. But the Baltimore Ravens, they don't have Tyler Huntley around. They have Josh Johnson as their backup quarterback, so maybe they're looking for a little bit more of a polished and more and better uh, quality player. But here's what CBS Sports had to say about Zach Wilson specifically. There isn't exactly a strong market for a former top three pick whose erratic quarterback play resulted in multiple demotions. But at just 24 years old, with dual threat traits, Zach Wilson could be a low-risk reclamation project for a contender. The return would almost not certainly, or would almost certainly not exceed that which the Bears or Patriots got for Justin Fields and Mac Jones, respectively. But one thing's for sure: the Jets have had their fill with the aging but superior Aaron Rodgers. Once again, back in the saddle. Now, Zach Wilson has had a rocky career. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for him. I'm not going to sit here and say that he deserves to be a starting quarterback in this league. But I think that he could be a high-level QB, too. And to be honest, using a top three pick on a QB, two is never a good idea. But who would have thunk that Zach Wilson would have been this bad? I mean, everyone was fooled by his pro day video. Everyone was fooled by the hype coming out of – or come or the hype around him coming out of BYU – but the career, it just has not panned out the way that a top three pick should go. Now, I want you to join our family here at Chat Sports by subscribing today. We provide NFL, NBA, college football, and we're even starting to get you some seams coverage as well. So if you're a seam head and you love baseball, I encourage you to subscribe. Don't forget to turn on your notifications. That way you can know whenever we go live, whenever we post short form content, or whenever we put out any of our on-demand videos. Now, the last player I want to discuss is Marshawn Lattimore, a.k.a. Mike Evans' daddy, because he is a name that's been red hot around trade rumors for a couple years now. Now, in terms of where Marshawn Lattimore could go, the San Francisco 49ers, they could use some cornerback help. So could the Baltimore Ravens, the Las Vegas Raiders. They got a good defense, but Antonio Pierce could look to try and make that a great defense by bringing in one of the top cornerbacks in the league. And on top of that, the Cincinnati Bengals, they could look to boost their defensive side of the ball as well. Now, Marshawn Lattimore, he is an interesting topic of discussion because when he's healthy, he is truly one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. That is not something I'm willing to argue with. If you disagree, you can argue with a brick wall. But Marshawn Lattimore has had a really tough time staying on the field the last couple of seasons. But you see the numbers on your screen. Whenever he's on the field, he can still play at a really, really high level. Now, the former first-round pick out of Ohio State could get dealt, and there's a handful of reasons why. Now, the New Orleans Saints are always up against the cap, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to figure it out. Every single year, the Saints find themselves in cap hell. And every single year, they find themselves well over the salary or under the salary cap, so they have money to spend. Now, Jeremy Fowler does think that he is available, or he has reported that teams think that he is available. And everything I've seen around the New Orleans Saints and Mickey Loomis and Marshawn Lattimore, the Saints GM, Mickey Loomis, did say that they have not gotten an offer that they can't refuse. And I believe that that's what's going to take, or that's what it's going to take to move on from Lattimore. The big issue, like I said, he's only played in 17 games the last two years. It hasn't been ideal. You want somebody to be on the field because the best ability is availability. However, he's still just 27. He's on the right side of 30, and he could still be a really good football player for a team that needs a true cornerback, especially a solid veteran presence. But he did stay healthy in his career prior to the 2022, 2022 season. He was able to play a lot of snaps and log a lot of production for the New Orleans Saints down in the bayou. And that is just a handful of reasons why I think Marshawn Lattimore could be on the move. 
Now, sound off for me, everyone. Give me a Dark Horse blockbuster trade idea. Like, get weird. Get crazy. I mean, send Patrick Mahomes to the Cowboys or something. I don't know. Like, get, have some fun with it. It's the offseason, and we want you guys to get crazy. Shout out to you guys for hanging out with us and watching today's video. We'll see you guys next time. Have a happy football. All right. One segment down, two to go, baby. What's up? Okay. So let me know. If you guys want to get on the show, use hashtag NFL. And on top of that, uh, if you guys want to get on the program, it's the best way to do it for free. Uh, what about it? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so we got, yo, coming in from Daniel to Timotio, Timotio is saying, yeah, Jim is saying, thank you. Gold, I have Goff and Richardson, Brandon A would go to KC for Buffalo. Gotcha. Very nice. If it's Zach Wilson, the Jets are going to have to trade him plus a second rounder to get rid of him. Yeah, I mean, that's how trades work sometimes. The, Stephon Diggs, can you pull up the Stephon Diggs trade details real quick? Adrian, sometimes players get traded with picks to get off of books because that's just how things work. L literally, the, the most recent blockbuster trade that happened, Stephon Diggs got traded with draft picks to Buffalo. So there you go. That or From Buffalo to Houston, excuse me. So there you go. But use hashtag NFL, get on the show and let me know what you guys think. Uh, we're going to dive into a mock draft from Lance Zerline over at NFL.com. It's a really juicy one, a lot of really good moves. So it's going to be fun. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section if you're having a good time. Uh, like the video. Helps the bosses know that I am doing a good job. This is my second live NFL daily. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing these. Hopefully, if you guys like me on the show... Hopefully, I'll get to keep hanging out with you guys. I've been here at Chat Sports for a little over two years and coming up on year three here in a few months. I love my job. I love doing this thing, and I love talking football. So hopefully, you guys are enjoying the content, and hopefully, uh, I'm entertaining for you because that's that's the goal. I, I want to be entertaining, and I want to be informative, and I want to you know, have you guys enjoy what we're doing, putting out every day. All right. We're going to get into the mock draft from Lance Zerline. It's his third NFL mock draft. And without further ado, let's break it on down. Welcome into NFL Daily. My name is Trace Gerard. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Lance Zerline Mock Draft 3.0. And I'm going to be going through every selection in the first round and giving my reaction. But before we dive into that, if you want your team to have a successful NFL draft, don't jinx it. Don't try and take any chances. Just hit the thumbs up icon, like the video, so that way your team can make a perfect pick, have a great draft, and a stellar offseason. All right, so there's no surprise here. Caleb Williams, you are a Chicago Bear. Number two, we're going Jaden Daniels. He is the quarterback out of LSU, headed to the Washington Commanders. And funny enough, he jumps Drake May, who goes number three, to the New York football giants who did trade up to make this selection. Now let's dive into what Lance Zerline said specifically. In this three-spot move up the board, the Giants probably have to pay more than the standard trade chart would indicate since they supply or since the supply side of the quarterback position is dwindling, but the demand remains high. Now Brian Dable fostered Josh Allen's raw talents in Buffalo and could have a chance to do the same with this toolsy but inconsistent North Carolina product. He has been getting a lot of Josh Allen comps, and I think him or May to the Giants could be really, really fun. Now, number four overall, it's J.J. McCarthy headed out to Minnesota to team up with Kevin O'Connell, Justin Jefferson, Aaron Jones, T.J. Hawkinson, and Jordan Addison. What a freaking offense. But like the Giants, the Vikings also had to trade up. So let's see what Zerline said there. In the wake of the Giants vaulting into the number three spot for a quarterback, the Vikings are still able to move up for a signal caller of their own 
by giving the Cardinals pick numbers 11 and 23. McCarthy should be a or should pair nicely with Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota. Now, before we keep this thing rocking and rolling, I just want to know one simple thing. Is J.J. McCarthy worthy of a top five pick? Just give me a Y for yes or an N for no in the comment section. It's a hot topic of discussion, and I think that people are going to get real loud with this question. So let me know, and feel free to sound off. Now at number five overall, you got Maserati Marvin Harrison Jr. to team up with Jim Harbaugh and uh, Justin Herbert in L.A. So that's going to be a good pick there. I really, really like that selection for the Chargers. Quentin Johnston has not really been that great, and they did lose Keenan Allen this offseason. Malik Neighbors, he's headed to New England at number six overall, and I think that this could be a really good move for a team that's desperate for a pass catcher, but also could go quarterback. So why did Lance Zerline have the Patriots trade down? Well, let's tell you. New England is willing to pass on a quarterback or on the quarterback position with the third pick in order to add more draft capital for their rebuild. After moving down, they grab the wideout with the highest ceiling in the draft. I think that's a good move for New England. I do think that they could still be in the market for a quarterback, but if they don't, Maserati Mar feels like a great selection for the team up in Foxborough. Now, Joe Alt, the undisputed number one offensive tackle in this draft, He's headed to Tennessee because God knows Will Levis needs better protection and Tajay Spears needs better running lanes. Now, this is a surprising pick for Atlanta. A lot of mock drafts recently have been sending Dallas Turner, the edge rusher out of Alabama, to Atlanta. However, Lance Zerline had Jared Verse, the Florida State pass rusher who is stellar and a really, really fun player to watch to the Dirty Birds. Now, before we keep this thing moving, like I always say, and I encourage you to subscribe to join our live NFL draft coverage. We're going to be live for every day, every round, every pick. And we're going to break it down before ESPN, before NFL Network, because we don't go to commercials. Like some of these other big, big companies, they go to commercial when your favorite team is making picks, but you need to know who those picks are. So I encourage you to subscribe and join our coverage. The NFL Draft is just around the corner. Now, Roma Dunze, he is actually on a visit with the Chicago Bears recently. So I could see uh, Matt Eberflus wanting another pass catcher to go alongside Caleb Williams. Because if you have a room of DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Roma Dunze, that is a pretty sneaky good wide receiver group. Now, Brock Bowers goes to the New York Jets at number 10. He's a generational tight end talent, and I think that New York needs all the help they can get for Aaron Rodgers. Outside of Garrett Wilson, they just really need some pass-catching help. Dallas Turner, he's headed to the desert in Arizona to boost their pass rush. Maybe he could be their J.J. Watt 2.0. Who knows? But here's what Lance Zerline said on why the Cardinals traded up uh, or traded to this pick. After trading down from number four in exchange for a pair of first-round picks from the Vikings, the Carters are still able to grab immediate pass rush help off the edge in the form of the freaky athletic Dallas Turner. Now, that's why the uh, Fal or not the Falcons, the Cardinals traded down. Sorry for that typo up there, but there you go. There you have it. Now, Quinion Mitchell, arguably the best cornerback in this draft class, he is headed to Sean Payton's Denver Broncos, and this is a move that I could see being made, but I could also see the Broncos being in the market for a quarterback, so don't be too surprised if they trade up as well. Now, J.C. Latham is headed to the Las Vegas Raiders. Feels very fitting because he's been getting a lot of Alex Leatherwood comps. Maybe you get Alex Leatherwood 2.0 out in the Sin City. Olu Fashanu. He, in my opinion, is the second best offensive lineman in this draft class, and it's not too far from behind or too far behind Joe Alt. He is a really good player. The Saints need offensive tackle help desperately because Trevor Penning hasn't panned out to be a great player, and Ryan Ramchek on the other side is dealing with some really scary injury stuff. So I think that this pick makes some sense for New Orleans. Byron Murphy, he's showing up that pass or that uh, pass rush, that run stopping. He's showing up the middle of the trenches for the Indianapolis Colts. I love the defensive tackle out of Texas. But Brian Thomas Jr., 
Might be one of the sneakier, better picks for Arizona here. I mean, Arizona has getting a haul in this draft. You already got Dallas Turner, but now you're going to get Brian Thomas Jr. I absolutely love the wide receiver out of LSU. He is really, really good as a really good running mate alongside Malik Neighbors. And on top of that, I think that he could be an excellent addition to any wide receiver group that he joins. And before we keep this thing moving, I need you to give me a hot take for round one of the NFL draft. Like, I want this a red hot take. It doesn't have to be true. Like, it's a hot take for a reason. My hot take, Malik Neighbors goes before Marvin Harrison Jr. So you got to beat mine. You got to be bold with it. All right, let's kick it back to the draft. We're about halfway through here. Terry and Arnold is headed out to Duval to help out the Jacksonville Jaguars defense that at the end of last season was struggling. The team itself just wasn't looking great. The offense was slower. The defense wasn't doing as well. Hey, they need some help. Terry and Arnold could offer that. And he's a really good corner for the record. Troy Fontenew, a talented, very versatile offensive lineman out of Washington. He's going to give some better protection to Joe Burrow in the Cincinnati Bengals. And honestly, probably one of my best or my favorite draft crushes I have this year, Leitu Latu. Incredible story. Insane production. This guy is special, and he is going to be a really good player for whoever he ends up with. I actually love this fit for the Los Angeles Rams, making that defense even faster and even more explosive. Talisi Fuaga is headed out to Pittsburgh to protect the right side of the offensive line for Mike Tomlin's offense. Chop Robinson. They call him Pork Chop because he's a big old dude, and he is thick, giggity. He is headed to Miami to help Mike McDaniel's defense get this thing off the ground, maybe to stop the Kansas City Chiefs, and maybe go and win some football games. Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. Producer Chip would love this one because he is an Eagles fan and a Clemson alum. I think Nate Wiggins has some really good attributes. I'm not sure if he is my number two cornerback. However, I do think that he is a good corner, and I think that he's a good fit in Philadelphia who – isn't sold on James Bradbury. Darius Slay isn't the player he used to be. I think this is a good fit there. Now, Graham Barton, the interior offensive lineman, stellar pick for Seattle. I think this is a really, really good selection for the Seahawks, and I think that Graham Barton is a really good player. Now, why did the Seahawks trade down? Well, let's kick it to Lance Zerline. And just for the record, this pick was acquired from Minnesota through Arizona. So it was that trade that happened earlier in the mock draft. So fans often moan when their GM moves down, but the Seahawks fans are used to it. John Schneider's trade from number 16 back to 23 pays off as Seattle still lands the best true interior offensive lineman in this class. And we got a handful of picks to get to to round out the show. But before we do, your favorite team, just recently dropped some NFL draft hats. And if you want to get geared up, go to NF or chatsports.com slash NFL draft hats. They got flat bills. They got curved bills. They got faded. They got all sorts of colors, black, gray, team colors, whatever you want. Just use our link, chatsports.com slash NFL draft hats. The link is in the comment section and description of this video. You'll be ordering it from Fanatics for what it's worth, but our link just lets them know we sent you and it helps support the cause here. All right, Dallas. Oh, Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Could have had Derrick Henry. Could have had so many players. But I do like the selection. I, I think Tyler Guyton is a good offensive lineman, and I think that the Cowboys could benefit from getting a new offensive tackle. They lost Tyron Smith in free agency as he's headed, uh, he's headed elsewhere. I, I, I honestly just think that this is a really smart uh, decision for Dallas. It's not the sexy pick, but it's a smart one. Now, who wins the NFC East? They haven't had a repeat winner in God knows how long. Who's going to win it this year? You think the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Commanders, or the Giants? Let me know in the comment section. I think it might be the Eagles this year. Now, Tyler Newbin, a really good safety out of the Minnesota Golden Gophers, is staying up north, and he's headed to Green Bay. Amarius Mims, a bona fide right tackle from the Georgia Bulldogs, gives Washington a little extra help, and they did trade up to get this selection. So let's dive into Lance Zerline's thoughts here. With Washington currently holding two picks in the second round and three picks in the third, 
it would make perfect sense for the commanders to jump back into the first round and grab any offensive tackle who slips a little bit, bolstering the protection for the quarterback selected at number two overall, which in this case was Jaden Daniels. A Kool-Aid McKinstry, in my opinion, is the better of the two Alabama cornerbacks, but I do think that there is a case to be made for both him and Taron Arnold. I think that Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to be a good player in the league. I don't know if the fit in Arizona is specifically what I like. However, I think that he's going to be a good player making this a decent pick. Now, Adnay Mitchell, thank God Buffalo got a, a wide receiver. They need all the help they can get. They're a team that I could see possibly being interested in moving up to go get a more prime wide receiver. But at the end of the day, I think the first round is definitely going to a pass catcher. Pass catcher. A pass catcher up in Buffalo. Now, number 29 overall, the Lions are adding to that defense, bringing in Cooper DeGene to maybe chew off some kneecaps or bite off some kneecaps or whatever the saying was. I like Cooper DeGene. He, off, he is a really good all-around defensive back. He also offers a lot of special teams ability, and I think that him in Detroit is actually a really, really good fit. Jordan Morgan, the offensive tackle out of Arizona, is giving some better protection to Lamar Jackson. Darius Robinson, he's getting a lot of Cameron Jordan-type comps, a really high motor, broke out this past season and showed out at the Senior Bowl and to round things out. If the Chiefs don't have Rasheed Rice, well, maybe they'll have Lad McConkey because that's who Lance Zerline mocked in his mock draft 3.0. McConkey is a really good wide receiver. I don't know if he's a round one kind of guy, but at the end of the day, Chiefs need a pass catcher, and I think that this is a good fit for Patrick Mahomes. But there you go. That's the rep mock draft 3.0 from Reliant Zerline. And I'm just kind of curious what the general consensus is. Which was the better draft class? 2023 or 2024? Let me know in the comment section what you think. And as always, hope you guys have a happy football. We'll see you next time. There you are. One more segment to go. One more segment to go. Booyah. The Bucks. Evan just said the Bucks are not taking a wide receiver. You are high. This channel is just fake and spam. So, Evan, I encourage you to rewind it because I didn't say that the Bucks were taking a, a wide receiver. I said the Bills. T Evan, tell me you're not watching or you just have it muted without telling me that because I didn't say that the Bucks are going to get a wide receiver, dude. I said that the Bills or that Buffalo, if, if you didn't listen, that's not on me. That's on you, my man. Yeah, Evan, you're begging for, this channel is begging for likes and spamming comments. Well, Evan, we appreciate you for liking, subscribing, and commenting because if you weren't subscribed, you wouldn't be able to comment. And on that note, we appreciate you, but don't be jealous that we, have, that we get to talk about sports for a living and you don't get to. That's not my problem, my friend. Thank you for hanging out and supporting the channel. Appreciate you. Use hashtag NFL unless your name is Evan to get on the show because Evan cannot for the next 24 hours. Send in a super chat to skip the line. Otherwise, a freeway is just using hashtag NFL. If you do super chat, you skip the line. It's like the fast pass at Disney World. We spend a little extra time on it. And there you go. Uh, if you're going to be a hater and just going to be jealous and try and bring people down because you're miserable like Evan, that's not my problem. That's something you should take up with yourself, your mirror, and maybe your therapist. I don't know. Yeah, we'll start there. We'll start there. Yeah, start the way in and then go to the Super Chat. Yeah, cool. No, you're good. No, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Like, it, it's not the end of the world. Um, all right. Cool. We're going to dive on into the mailbag. Yep. We're going to dive on into the mailbag. We're going to answer your questions, react to your hot takes. Without further ado, let's get this uh, let's get this content, this Q and A, rocking and rolling, baby. What's going on, NFL fans? Hope you're having a happy football. My name is Trace Gerard. We're gonna be diving into your questions and hot takes, and I'm gonna be reacting and answering all of those. But before we do, if you want to be a part of our coverage in the future, or be a part of these mailbags, just subscribe, hit that big red button for 100% free NFL 
college football and NBA coverage. And if you turn on your notifications, you'll be notified anytime we put out some short form content, our on demand videos, or we go live. Without further ado, let's kick it over to Shamari Peoples. The Bills will be worse this year, in my opinion. Uh, I totally agree. I think that the Buffalo Bills will not be nearly as good as they were in 2023. Uh, I don't think they're going to be as good as they were the last few years. Like, to be honest, the Bills are a team that kind of, I mean, you were 11-6 and six last year. You won the AFC East. Like, these are things that I, I just don't see repeating. Like, I, I don't know who will win the AFC East. I, I don't. But I can tell you, I just don't know if the lack of Stephon Diggs, the lack of Gabe Davis, the lack of some of these players that you lock, walk in free agency or you cut, like, I don't think that that's going to, help your team. I think in the long run it does, but in terms of next year, I think the Bills are going to take a little bit of a step back. Tony Fuentes, which wide receiver will be perfect for the Chiefs? Uh, I'm going A.D. Mitchell. A.D. Mitchell out of Texas just feels like a great pick for Kansas City. That's a draft idea. In terms of free agency, what about Michael Thomas? Go get the Saints pass catcher, the former Saints legend, or Tyler Boyd. I think those are options to look out for Kansas City. Epic Jet, who do you feel is the front runner for the AFC East next season? Dolphins, Jets, maybe still the Bills. Well, I just said, um, I don't know. So, good timing on this one. Um, I'm going to say, if Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy, the Jets are definitely a team to watch out for. But I think the Dolphins are probably the team I would pick. Clark Griswold, would you rather sign Justin Simmons or Quandre Diggs? I'm going Quandre Diggs, uh, or not Quandre Diggs. I'm going Justin Simmons. Let me make that clear. I would pick Justin Simmons over Quandre Diggs. Simmons has led the NFL in interceptions since joining the league. Um, he's just so versatile. He's so talented, and he's a player that can be really good for wherever he goes. So I personally like Justin Simmons, but let's ask you the same question. Which safety do you like more? Just give me a JS for Justin Simmons or a QD for Quandre Diggs. I'm going to be typing my JSs, but this is your turn to get in the comment section. All right, Bulls Nation, New England throws a curveball and drafts J.J. McCarthy because there's rumors saying that they're going to bench whoever they draft for a little bit to learn the system. Uh, I'm going to just say this really quick before I get to J.J. McCarthy specifically. I think most quarterbacks should sit at least a little bit of time before being thrown into the Wolves. Um, I personally believe it, as NFL fans and as people in general, we live in a microwave society where we expect results like that, and that's just not the world and the reality of the world we live in. So I think that giving some time to a player and letting him sit, letting him learn, letting him study, and just get molded into the player that they can become is the right call here. Just going to put that out there before I even answer this. Um, New England drafting J.J. McCarthy – I could see them going quarterback, but I could also see them trading back and letting another team go and get a prime quarterback, getting some of that draft capital to help with the rebuild and you know take, take advantage in the future of that trade. So maybe that's something that could happen, but J.J. McCarthy feels like he could be a Viking, if you ask me. It feels like that kind of might be the move there. Steve H., the Texans now focus all draft on defense. I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> like... Don't need a quarterback, don't need a running back, don't need receivers, don't need a tight end. Offensive line feels pretty solid. Like The Texans draft is a luxury draft. You can go pick defensive players, maybe go get a safety, go get some corner help, go get some DBs. Um, maybe go grab a defensive lineman, don't think you really need it. Maybe a linebacker. Feels like it's a, a defense-specific draft. Uh, this is a good year for the Texans to have luxury picks. I'll tell you that right now. I, I love what D'Amico Ryan's Nick Casario and the Houston Texans are doing this offseason. He ha who shall not be named? Kanye West. You think that the Texans can dethrone the Chiefs? Uh, I think it's a little too early to say that. Um, I, I think that the Texans have had the best, if not one of the best, offseasons this year. They've been really active in free agency. <laughs> brought in Daniil Hunter, brought in Joe Mixon, brought back uh, or brought in, excuse me, Stephon Diggs. Like they're doing some really, really good things out in Houston. And I don't know the, the big X factor is Patrick Mahomes. Like, can they beat Patrick Mahomes? That's the big question. I'm gonna ride with Patrick Mahomes nine out of ten times just because of how good he is. 
But to be honest, I would love to see the Texans take down Kansas City. Now I'm curious, how far do you think Houston can go in 2024? Do you think they can win the AFC Championship? Do you think they win the AFC South? Do you think they win the Super Bowl? I want you to tell me how far that they can go and maybe even their win-to-loss ratio if you want to go above and beyond. And if you want to go even further, not just in supporting us, but giving you the chance to make some lifetime memories and some lasting fun, download the Game Time app. Use promo code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. You'll get uh, the best seats for the lowest price guaranteed. The prices drop as the event gets closer, and they have flash deals, zone deals, all sorts of cool promos. And on top of that, they also let you know whenever there's like a ticket promo or a game promo going on, like bobbleheads or scarfs or t-shirt giveaways and stuff. And on top of all that, with the app, you can actually see what your seats are in the app, and you can move your phone around to see what your view is going to be in the app. So whenever you do that, it's really helpful. Look at the pictures on your screen. You can see where the uh, where the seats are going to be. You can see the view of what your seats are going to have. And you can do that by downloading the Game Time app using promo code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S. Download the Game Time app. Terms do apply. Uh, it's the best ticketing app. I absolutely love it. Once again, use promo code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. All that information is in the comment section and description of this video maybe t higgins to the giants maybe i think that the giants have an interesting trade package they could offer with a pretty good pick don't know if they'd want to trade their first round pick i don't think that t Higgins goes for a first round pick but they do have interest in, intriguing draft uh compensation that they could or draft picks that they could send as trade compensation that's what i was trying to say thank you for the question nick aj the Cowboys trade Dak, CeeDee, and Micah Parsons to the Cardinals for Kyler Murray. This year's first, second, third picks. Next year's one and two. Okay, so um, first of all, I don't know why in the hell you'd ever want to trade for Kyler Murray. He stinks. Um, believe it or not, I got a pick six off of him in high school flag football, and my team beat him. So there you go. I don't think Kyler Murray's that great. I would rather have Dak Prescott over Kyler Murray. Um, I don't know why in the hell Dallas would trade CD and Micah Parsons and Dak Prescott. That's just not going to happen. AJ, decent idea, I guess. I, here's the thing. If I'm the Cowboys, I'm not even offering this. And if I'm the Cardinals, I'm laughing at you and I'm turning it down because I'm like, no, I'm not giving you all of this and my quarterback. Like, no. I don't think either side of the of the or either side of this trade idea would be interested in it. That's just my opinion. If you disagree, rip me in the comment section. I just I no no Kyler Murray stinks Cowboys fans you don't want anything to do with them if you want to hit me up and you want to interact with me or ask me questions that didn't get answered on this show feel free to give me a follow on social media at Trace Gerard 48 for both of the Instagram and X accounts all of the information is on screen I also put the links in the comment section and description of this video all right, Mad Max, just a couple more questions. I think this might be one of our last ones. Where will Brandon Ayuk play next year? <sighs> well, we did do a video about some trade ideas, and I did put out four Brandon Ayuk trade destinations. I think either of any of these four teams could make some sense. Buffalo needs a wide receiver. Kansas City needs wide receivers. Pittsburgh, New England, like these are all teams that could use a bona fide pass catcher, a wide receiver one. I also do think that he's sticking around in San Francisco, though. Like, if I'm John Lynch and I'm Kyle Shanahan, I'm doing everything in my power to keep him around. I don't see a world where Brandon Ayuk leaves. But, you know, I've been wrong before, so who knows. All right, I just kicked Stan. Who is Stan? I don't, I don't know. Let me know if you know who Stan is, because I don't want to kick Stan. Stan seems like a cool dude. Can any team from the NFC win the Super Bowl over the Chiefs? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the Niners could beat them. I think the Eagles might have a chance. I think that uh, Cowboys can't win a Super Bowl. Sorry, Cowboys fans. They just, it won't happen. Um, I mean, the Falcons have had, had a decent team. I don't know if they can win the Super Bowl, though. I, yeah, I think that any team can beat the Chiefs. It's just, it's it's not so much the doing it. I think it's the, men, the, the, the mental hurdle and the mind game of it, of what can happen with the Chiefs. I I, I think that, 
the Super Bowl champion over the next handful of years is going to be an AFC team. I think the AFC is much more loaded than the NFC is. But that doesn't mean that the Ravens, or not the Ravens, that the 49ers or the Eagles or the, you know, what some of these other crazy good teams, the Rams, who knows what they could be. I, I, the Packers, who knows? The Vikings, who knows? The Bears, who knows? Like, I think that there is teams out there who could beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. But, Stan, I appreciate the question. So, we were going to ask this a second ago, but I want you to answer this now. Where do you think Brandon Ayuk plays in 2024? Do you think he sticks around in San Francisco like me? Or do you think he gets moved to a new team? Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think. And as always, y'all have a happy football. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. All right, let me know. If you want your team to have a successful draft, like the video. And if we don't get any super chats here in the next two minutes, we're going to hop on out of here and get our weekend started. Well, not our weekend because I'm working tomorrow, but two-minute shot clock. If you guys want to keep hanging out with us, we can do that. We just need a uh, $2 super chat or, or $0.99 super chat or more. And other than that, uh, I hope you guys had a good time. hope you enjoyed the content. Over 1,000 people tuned in today. Got to love that. I feel like the Lions can take less chances. Um, NFL, or that one Falcons fan says, lay two law two to the Falcons. That would be a really good pick. But I think that the Falcons are going to be able to get Jared versus or Dallas Turner. And if I'm the Falcons, I would want the surefire pick that is Jared versus or, uh, or uh, Dallas Turner rather than the little bit of a gamble, like slight, slight gamble of lay two law two. That's just my opinion. Tony Fuentes spamming go Chiefs. Uh, if you d are tired of the Chiefs winning Super Bowls, type FKC. Type FKC if you're tired of the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes and Taylor Swift. So, uh, Sala, Sally says uh, the Vikings are going to draft McCarthy. I could see that. Tony Fuentes saying, damn. Tony, I don't make the rules. I'm not a Chiefs fan. I'm just letting other people have an opportunity to spam the chat too. You've been spamming it, so I wanted other people to get a chance to spam it too. All right. We're going to hop on out of here. Y'all never answered my question. Choppy, like I said, feel free to hit me up on social media. We, don't, we can't get to everybody's question. The only way we guarantee getting to your question is if you do send in a super chat. That's just how it is. You're up to the – don't get mad at me. Get mad at producer Tex because you're up to his mercy, and he picks the questions he thinks are best. So that's not a – don't, don't shoot the messenger, man. Don't shoot the messenger. But Choppy – should the Panthers go after T. Higgins? Yes. I even said that in a whole – we had a whole video about it, and I discussed it. And I also mentioned T. Higgins as a destination for – or the Panthers as a destination for T. Higgins. So we're going to hop on out of here. Tony Fuentes is keeping the chat rolling. So it's time to hop on out of here. Taylor Swift fans, uh, they just stay loud, don't they? Just kidding. Tony, we love you, man. Hope you're doing well. The internet. Have some fun. Hope you guys have a happy football. We'll see you guys next time. We got some content coming out right after this and all throughout the weekend.